you ever just have random thoughts pop in your head? I'm walking off the roof of this camper, and I remember the time I was like seven years old, and The Undertaker beat up Hulk Hogan. And locked him in a coffin that they couldn't get open. And I was pretty sure as a seven-year-old kid that I just witnessed a murder. That's what I'm thinking about right now. Hello and welcome everybody. Josh RV Nerd here at Halid RV. Sun looks beautiful on this thing, but it is low in the sky and it is blinding me right now. So pardon my 499 gas station sunglasses. They are still 100% UV effective, um, they just simply don't cost an arm and a leg, and I'm clumsy, I break things, and I tend to swear less when I break or lose a set of these. <laughs> Behind us, come barely, barely over 10,000 pounds, which makes, despite the size of this thing, uh, a fairly good fit for, say, like a three-quarter ton with an appropriate payload package. You don't necessarily have to go to one ton or dually for something big and beautiful. This is a Cougar 344 MKS, and when it was in production, which was not too long ago, it was one of my favorite couples camping Cougar floor plans um, because it, it took the conventional rear living room with all the windows on the door side, which this one has, which is awesome, but it flip-flopped the upper deck in a way. It's kind of a classic throwback. It offers uh, some pretty good travel functionality in that regard, but it just, it just feels so much grander as a result of having the staircase to the upper deck on the driver's side of the RV. Um, it is a one owner. We originally sold it here and folks said, you know, the thing is we held on to it for a while because we just couldn't find anything we liked better. And once you're in a Cougar, there's not a whole lot of steps up you can go. And the only one these folks found is they just swapped into a big, beautiful, brand new front living Montana, which if you're gonna go to anything from a Cougar, moving up one step into the Montana family, Makes a lot of sense. So when I make these videos, especially like on a used RV, I try to go way out of my way to find something that's like not right with it. Because I think that's frankly, uh, in the used RV market, really more of what we're trying to figure out is like, what sort of history does this have? What sort of concerns should I have for it? And I had to get real microscopic uh, level to find anything on this that brought me any level of concerns. Um, there's really only two things I can think to report. Like, do you see the little glitch with the flooring right there? Because, man, you got to look close. You got to get right up here all up in its business to see that slight little discoloration on the floor right there. I don't know if they scrubbed it. Uh, they were cleaning it. I don't know if they spilled a cleanser or something on it, but I actually, this is my third time through the RV and I just happened to catch it out of the corner of my eye. I was like texting and looking down and, uh, I just, I was like, oh, Hey, look at that. Like other than that, I mean, this thing's beautiful. If, if you don't like Brown, you're not going to like it. Cause this is every shade of Brown, Brown and Browner you've ever seen in your entire life. But it's kind of funny. RVs that were all brown like this, they got kind of boring to me. That's a hide -a bed back there, by the way. Um, and then, in, uh, I don't know, recently here, that warm feeling that these have, it's kind of growing back on me. Now, this is over here overlooking the door side of the RV, by the way. Cougar was one of the very first to go with these maximized windows, and it's like now you see everybody and their brother doing it. It does mean that you've lost a touch of storage doing it, but I think you're going to see uh, you've got storage to spare. And I didn't do this. The previous owners that they they stacked the chairs up and strapped them down exactly like you're supposed to in transit. Like anything this RV was supposed to have had, this RV has enjoyed, which I think is very cool. You might notice the LED accent light paneling in the slide fascia as well as it kind of, it's like the, the dude's rug. It just really ties the room together, man, the way that you've got the same thing going on in that ceiling fixture up there. The island in this thing is a freaking hoss, too. That is a big island. Let me actually, let me slide back here. Like, if you're sitting on the couch, this is kind of your POV right here. One of the nice things about it is you still have a pretty good shot at the TV screen over there, but you're going to see in a minute 
that is actually also a uh, like uh, uh, a pivoting screen. So if you want to watch it from the back, and that's a Roku Smart TV, by the way. Uh, <laughs> that is that's that is pretty cool. So if you got some decent uh, you know Wi-Fi hookup, or if you're um, hooked up to and you're like just using your phone as a data point. You know, you could keep up to date on your Netflix and your Disney Plus. What series are you watching right now? Or what is binge watch worthy? My wife and I take turns watching things, and I am currently in limbo looking for my next thing to enjoy. But it's the way that they flip this around. It's a little bit different, but it creates a monster amount of storage space, and it feels a lot more homey. If we start opening everything up in here, it's like... It just keeps it just keeps going. Now that is a, a four door gas electric refrigerator freezer. Uh, so that is something that uh, could uh, you know if you got to make a parking lot stay over, very handy uh, for that sort of function right there. You might notice that the, uh, the 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 TV pivots around, and you can use that for viewing from the sofa or the dining or whatever. But you can also just as easily uh, use that to access what I'm going to call the pantry team at storage center below it. And one of the things I thought was very cool on this, these folks put the best, like, flawlessly executed add-on aftermarket countertop extension right there I've ever seen. Uh, it is a big, thick chunk of, uh, like, composite hardwood, basically. Not, not composite as in, like, plastic material, but, like, the individual kind of, like, butcher's block cutting board sections right here. The mechanism on this is amazing, and the way it marries right up to that counter. Whoever did this, they possess skills I don't have. I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not good at that stuff. I, I kind of suck with tools. <laughs> now we've we've jumped upstairs, and I'm going to pivot around in a second to give you a little bit better perspective as to uh, how this is laid out in the RV. But suffice to say, this bathroom is terrific. And again, I think that's where. This is a little bit bigger than the average bear, that, that common 35-foot fifth wheel. You know, you got the opposing slides downstairs, a king bed upstairs. This has those things. When you, you start looking at this thing, you realize that every room in this is like, it's just a little bit bigger, a little bit better. You see, you've got awesome storage in this bathroom, too. And I think some really nice counter space in here. Uh, this is all sealed edge pressed membrane countertop material in there, by the way. If I back up just a tick, you see that we're in the hallway now. Um, like over here, I'm gonna back up a little more so you can understand. Uh, we're in the hallway now over on the uh, the driver's side of the RV, just to kind of give you a little bit of a perspective here. That's what's neat about it. You don't just walk in the door and go right up the hallway. There's something about this. It feels more like a house. It's like, I'm, I'm calling it a hallway. RVs don't usually have a hallway. I, I, I mean, it just, it feels different you know this is dual entry so if you do have somebody on that guest hide a bed you've got doors that close out the bedroom or uh you know it, it's just easy for you to hop over if you got to make a little you know evening stop or something like that over here into the bathroom space the front closet there you can see over on the right hand side combo washer dryer ready another potential full-time capable sort of feature here now that window right there is huge and you can see how it's got the uh like the uh, what do I want to say? Wooden plantation style blinds. They work like a metal mini blind. They're just way easier to clean. I always like those. Uh, some people like them. Some people don't. I always thought they were great. Direct facing entertainment here. Factory installed second air, which is an option that we originally applied to this one. I, I couldn't imagine building a big fifth wheel like this with only a single air conditioner. But I don't know. I'm sure that there's some dealer that sells them because they're a dollar cheaper. And, you know, I tell you. We work with a lot of different people here at Halid RV, and there are a lot of people who call and say, I want this floor plan, I want as cheap as possible. I go, what equipment do you want? They're like, no, I want the best price. I'm like, that, that doesn't make sense to me. You got this big giant fifth wheel, you don't at least want a second air conditioner, you're only caring about the fact that it's a dollar cheaper. And there's a lot of places that sell a lot of units that way, so maybe I'm stupid, I don't know. <clears throat> the only trick with this floor plan is I can never really get the full bed into frame. This is a 70 by 80 king. So just to kind of give you a little perspective, we're gonna, gonna go into ultra wide mode here, brother. I don't like doing this because I think it gives you a skewed perspective of the bedroom, but 
just to kind of, I don't know, let you see that you can walk around the bed here a little bit. Now, if we close the slides for road mode, it's interesting. You got to kind of snake around here. Oh, you get to see my hand there. How you doing? Um, you got to snake around it a little bit. But if I kind of meld backwards through this thing, you'll see that it is what I call nap crap and snacktastic because we can get to the bedroom. We can get to the bathroom. And even though this thing really closes off the majority of the lower deck with the slides closed, you can still get to, I think, enough of the refrigerator that I feel like this qualifies for travel functional, maybe not 100% travel accessible, but you could kind of reach around there, grab a little bit of what you want. You pack your traveling stuff on this side of the fridge. You pack your destination stuff maybe on this side of the fridge, something like that. Now, I mentioned... Um, there were two potential notable items uh, on this RV. I only showed you the one thing on the floor. First thing I noticed <clears throat> was this. And some people might look at this and go, what the heck is that? If anybody's got dogs and you camp, you already know what this is, right? This is the little plastic spindle that uh, the, the doggy poop bags are wrapped around. So these folks had a dog. And the other thing that I noticed that really supported that was they had a little doggy anti-scratch guard over here on the door. Now, um, if you are, you know, sensitive to dog stuff, that might be a concerning point for you, which is why I like to get this stuff right out of the way. Um, I have a diminished sense of smell. I, I, I guess, because I just don't smell things that other people smell. I noticed that, I became aware of that about 10 or 12 years ago. It was starting to go, apparently, on me. Um, it's kind of like, yes, somebody who's blind, what's it like being blind? Well, I don't know. They only know how, what it's like being blind, you know? Um, but uh, I don't know what it's like to smell stuff, I guess, as well as other people, perhaps. Um, reason I'm getting at all this is uh, one of my coworkers mentioned, they, they kind of walked in and goes, hmm, kind of smells, I don't know. It's not cigarettes. It smells like something. Uh, just doing this a while, connecting the dots, a little correlative data here, I found that sometimes pet smells, just having an animal in this thing for a while, can sometimes vaguely resemble cigarette smells to people. Again, I'm not able to detect it. It could be a person who looked at it yesterday just was wrong. I don't know. But I'm just trying to give you every bit of information you can. And again, I'm having to I'm having to reach into the ether, into the realm of smell -o vision to find anything on this one that might be a point of concern for you. This thing is great. Now when we open everything up outside, it looks rather jarring to see that giant white baggage door staring you in the face. Remember, it's tan on the outside, it's just white on the inside. When it flips open, it sure does catch your attention, but in a way, I don't mind that. Because I tend to be, and I'm sure this will come as a surprise to you, a little clumsy, a little forgetful at times, and having a giant white thing on the side of my trailer going, Hey dummy, you left the door open! <laughs> well, I, I don't really mind that. Now, uh, on the outside here, we've got ourselves outside TV hookups and a handy little motion light up in there, which is pretty cool. Quad stable step here from Moride, giving us easy come and go. That is also an anti-slam door, which is fantastic. As we back up a little bit, you'll see this is a, uh, a dual awning unit and all of the windows over here on the door side, like we saw inside, and they all open for airflow on the slide. Again, the windows right here, the tall windows on either side of the sofa, those do not open for airflow. But with that big vent fan and all the other windows in this, I, I think you can still make it work. You open the window behind you when you're on the couch, you flip on that ceiling vent fan, you're gonna be good to go. Uh, we got a fold down cargo rack on the back here. That's rated for, I think Cougars, I'm trying to remember. Cherokees were 200 pounds in this generation. Cougars were 250. I don't know why I remember that. I know only that it will never be on Jeopardy. I have so much RV knowledge from previous years of RV production that, that will never be on Jeopardy. You know, Pat, or, uh, Alex is gone, hopefully. Like we saw LeVar Burton, um, you know, guest host one time, and that was it. He needs to come back full time. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, over here. Opposite side of our pass-through compartment that we saw earlier, we see our fully enclosed heated protected docking center of the RV is hot, cold camp rated. That phrasing often sometimes translating into what people call four seasons camping. Cougars have an excellent weather package on these things. This is also a feature they've done for a long, long time that I like. 
You got a little like hidden tool chest right there, but you can also use it for cargo loading space, which I think is really cool. Underbelly, of course, enclosed heated. Oh, the tires! I am glad I looked back at those things. Those are not the factory standard original tires. Uh, previous owners swapped those out, slapped on a set of Goodyear Endurance radials. Thankfully, they never had a blowout. They were just doing some proactive improvements to prevent any sort of preventable damage. Doesn't that just make a whole lot of sense? And obviously this thing has not been baked and fried by the sun because the, the, the color contrast on that is still just absolutely stellar. Spare tire does not look like it's seen the light of day, although the spare tire is the original factory tire, so kind of keep that in mind for age reasons. She's set up for a single battery right now. If memory serves correct, you can pivot that battery box 90 degrees and you could pop a second one in there if need be. And I'm very glad I got up on this roof. Not because, just, just because I guess I could say, because it looks fantastic, but because I forgot to close that vent right there. So we're not expecting rain tonight, but the time that I forget to close the vent would certainly be the time that it would rain. So I'm gonna make sure I get that thing covered. Now what's interesting here is up front, the folks added a Max Air vent cover over the bathroom vent fan. If you notice uh, back at that, uh, like if you rewind the footage a little bit, looking at the power vent fan that we saw in the living room kitchen area, there's little white clips that kind of stick up, little ears. You can uh, attach one of those vent covers right there to that big power vent fan and never even have to like screw into anything. Now what I wanted to check here, and I'm seeing exactly what I hoped I would see, yes! So. I thought I've looked and I thought I saw where some of the seals had been touched up. Even the whole front termination strip and the non-sag sealant on the corners, they've done significant proactive upkeep on this. And I mean, just look at the cleanliness of the roof. This has to have been stored like indoors out of the weather. It looks too good to have just been stored outside, totally uncovered. And if they did that, they must have been cleaning this thing once a week. This is nuts up here. Man, that is, look at that, that is just good looking. Sorry, I know I said that before, but that is good looking, isn't it? You got the big dual, because it has a little bit longer upper deck, it also has a little bit longer front awning as well. Handy little feature there. Um, now, whether you're curious or whether you're serious, you wanna know how much this thing's gonna set you back? Check the link in our video description. You can always see uh, pricing and availability uh, via the link to our website where we keep all that current and published. That way, if we happen to have it for a while and we have a price drop, you get to see that kind of stuff. And if she looks right, give us a call. We have um, you know, financing. We can obviously do trades. That's how this thing came in. You need hitching. You need a vehicle. We, we try to do package deals where we can. Trucks have just been harder to come by this year. But we do package deals. You don't need a vehicle at all. We can deliver it to you. Whatever you need. Give us a call. All in one place. The only thing we don't do is pesky add-on fees, which amazingly some places I've found are tacking on to even used RVs. How do you how do you look a customer in the eye and charge them a destination fee and a prep fee on a used RV? I don't know. I guess I don't have to find out because I don't work at a place that does it. <laughs> Family owned and operated, been here since 89. We're ready when you're ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. Okay.